Divorce is pretty common these days. The official stats say 50-50, but for the OP of this story, it might as well be 90-10, given that she grew up with all of her friends' parents either divorced or never married. Imagine growing up watching your parents in a loving relationship for 25 years. People around you, friends and teachers, looking at them and telling you how lucky you are for having a great example of what marriage should be like, only to one day accidentally find out that your mom is actually betraying your dad in a nasty, disgusting way. Let's read this story. Original post. My 24 female, mom, 47 female, and dad 50 male, have been together for 25 years, and I could have honestly said that they were the ideal relationship in my mind. They rarely ever argued, always talked to each other, and I thought, were always loving and faithful to each other. I can even remember in school a few of my teachers telling me that my dad and mom were a great couple, and that I should be thankful that I had a great example of what a healthy relationship looks like. They've rarely argued, I can count on both of my hands the times they've yelled at each other. They've always been happy together, as far as I know. I needed to use my mom's laptop to send off some work emails, as mine was not connecting to our Wi-Fi. I started sending off emails, and my mom's messages popped up on her laptop. It was from a guy named Chris, and he thanked her for draining him last night. I, not knowing what the hell was going on, decided to open up her messages, and I saw that she has been cheating on my dad for the past year at least. The messages they sent each other were extremely explicit, and they even sent pictures and videos. I started to hyperventilate and realized what was happening. I started to dry heave. I was able to screenshot the messages and send the pictures to my email. After that, I told my parents I was going out for a bit. My dad told me to stay safe and kissed my forehead, and I nearly broke down in the house. I was able to drive away for a few minutes and get to a private location and cry. Why would she do this? Does she not love my dad? He's done so much for her, waited on her hand and foot when she broke her leg skiing, moved so she could be closer to her family when she went through PPD with me. He's done so much for all of us, and she does this, why? Dad was always there for her when she needed him, worked overtime to allow us to experience things together. I don't know what I'm going to tell my sister, 18. She's coming back from university next week and she adores our dad. It's also the last thing I want to tell my brother, 22, because he's doing his masters, and I don't want anything to distract him from his final exams in a few months. It's like I can't tell anyone about this. All of my friends' parents are divorced or were never married to begin with, and they also looked at my parents as what a good marriage looked like. I'm sorry if I'm rambling, I just don't know what to do. Whenever I think about it, I feel hurt. I remember when I was 16 and my mom showed me the love letters and poems my dad wrote for her, and they were all so beautiful, he's loved her with all of his heart for 25 years and she's been doing this to him. The last person I want to tell is my dad. I feel as if me telling him will break everything, and the dad I knew who was so loving and caring will be gone. I've been told by my friends that it happened to their parents too, that for years they were never the same. My best friend's dad took his own life when he found out about his wife's infidelity. I'm sorry if this is rambling, I'm just so hurt and confused. Why would she do this? How do I tell my dad that the person he's loved for the last 25 years has betrayed him? Please, any advice is appreciated. Now for the top advice before reading the update. This almost the exact situation happened to me with my mom when I was 18. I confronted her at the time and told her she had to tell my dad. I didn't feel like it was my place to tell him. Four years later, I found out she was still doing it and never told my dad. My sister ended up telling him then. Looking back, I wish I would have told my dad right away when I was 18. A few years have gone by and my parents are actually still together. I don't live with them anymore so I'm sort of disconnected, but things seem better for them. I'm so sorry you're going through this. It really messed up my entire family's relationship with my mom. She should tell him anonymously, so she doesn't have to go through any more trauma than she already is. She can admit to it being her, if she chooses, once he's made aware, processes the information, and talks to his wife. Make a burner email account on Gmail or use a texting app, Attach the pictures, state the names, and so on. That seems incredibly harsh. Having a stranger anonymously tell you something so devastating. She needs to talk to mom. If mom doesn't come clean, she should talk to dad. It isn't something she should have to bear the weight of, but it's not something you want to hear from a stranger either. And I'm sure hearing it from your own child is devastating, but again, better than questioning a stranger. Tell her that she is to tell him or you will and not to delete or hide anything because you already have the proof to show him if you have to. He deserves to know. She'll get mad that you saw her personal stuff and will probably get defensive. But if she wasn't fooling around, she'd have nothing to worry about. It'll be tough, but it needs to be done. 
Good luck and keep us updated. Agree with this. Mom, I'm not going to hold this in. And if you make me be the one to tell dad and the other kids what's going on, I'm probably going to hate you for it for the rest of my life. Do the right thing. Now for the update. Sorry for the post being so long. It has been a while since I last posted and a lot has happened. Thank you for everyone who responded and everyone who DM'd me with advice and support. So, after I got back home, I headed straight to bed. When I was having breakfast the next morning, I was on Twitter and my mom saw a thread on the Chris Rock situation at the Oscars and we got to talking about it. I ended up asking about if she would have or ever had an open relationship agreement with dad. She shut it down straight away and said she could never do such a thing and that she loved my dad too much to ever let him sleep with someone else. She then went on for about 10 minutes on how much she loved him and how they were each other's one and only. I wanted to scream at her that I knew what she was doing, but I held my tongue and knew that I had to tell my dad about what I had found out. At the end of the week, I got everything together and asked my dad if he wanted to spend the day with me and go get food and do whatever he wanted to do. He said sure, and that he hasn't really spent any time with me since I started my new job, and it'd be nice to spend the day together. I tried to keep everything together, but he could tell something was off. We went to his self-storage lot as he needed to pick up some stuff to bring back to the house. Before we left, he stopped me and asked if I was alright. He said, hey, are you okay? You've been really quiet and clingy today, did something happen with your boyfriend? I ended up bursting into tears and told him what happened. He asked if I was 100% sure, and I said that I had my laptop with me and I could show him some of the emails I had saved. When he saw them, I could see the pain in his eyes. It was like someone had stabbed him. For a few minutes he was silent and there were tears just streaming down his face. He wasn't sobbing, there were just tears. He hugged me and said, thank you for telling me about this. No matter what happens from here, please remember I love you and your brother and sister. You lot are my pride and joy, don't ever forget that. He dried his face and we ended up driving home. When we got back, he told me to not mention anything to mom, and he wanted to check some things before he talked to her about this. We all ended up going to sleep early that night, but I couldn't rest. I kept on having nightmares where the worst happened to my dad. I ended up going downstairs at around 2 in the morning and saw my dad on mom's laptop looking through her emails. I asked what he was doing, and this was the first time I've ever seen my dad so angry. He turned his head around to me and just said, that freaking witch, and left the house. I checked the emails and saw that he had four days open. Seeing this has truly killed any part of me that had any feelings for my mom. The days in question were the day my aunt, dad's younger sister, died, the day after, the day of her funeral, and the day her ashes were scattered. In those emails were my mom asking to meet up with Chris, and asking Chris what he was going to do with her when she got to his place. I vomited again and realized that dad had just left the house and I had no idea where he was going. I got outside and saw he was sitting in the car and he was bawling. He couldn't stop crying. I felt as if this had broken him. After about an hour, I convinced him to come back inside and try to get some rest. I closed the laptop and put it back so my mom wouldn't find out about my dad going through her history. On the following Tuesday is when my dad decided to confront mom about her affair. I was not home when it happened but he sat down with her and asked if she was having an affair. She of course denied this and said that she could never do such a thing and that she loved him with all her heart. My dad lost it and showed her the emails and yelled at her, phoned her brother to pick her up and that he was filing for divorce immediately. Mom tried to say it was a mistake and that they could work through this, but dad isn't having any of it. Since that day, he has not contacted her unless it is through a lawyer. My uncle has come over the house a few times to get clothes and other things for my mom and he tries to give updates on her well-being to my dad, but he just shuts it down and says he doesn't care, and says that she needs to speed up on getting paperwork signed. As for my brother and sister, I contacted my brother on the Wednesday and told him what had happened. I apologized because it was so close to his exams and that this is the last thing that he should be worried about. He said that he'd be coming back once exams were over, and that I should keep an eye on dad just in case anything happened. My sister on the other hand came back home the day after I told her, and hasn't really left dad's side since. She basically waiting on him hand and foot, cleaning the house, making dinner for all of us. I think she's taking this the worse, and my dad thought so too, so he asked her to see a counselor and that he'd be okay. My mom has tried to contact all of us and none of us have responded, aside from making sure she had started on the paperwork and was in contact with a lawyer etc. Dad has said that I should probably meet with mom soon, as despite all that's happened between the two of them, she was never a bad mom and loved us just as much as he did. So, I will be meeting with her next week and I am dreading every minute of it.
So now we're all in a weird place where we don't know what's going to happen next. Dad is a lot less like himself and is a lot quieter and more reserved, which scares me. But thankfully a lot of his friends and family have been over offering him support. The one funny thing I can say is, when I told my close friends about their divorce, a lot of them made the joke that they'd be snapping up my dad once he's back on the dating market, which I can see as being a bit weird, but is pretty funny because they admitted to having crushes on him when they were 60. Stupid stuff like that, even if they are jokes, gives me some hope that once this all ends, he'll hopefully find someone who values and loves him like we all do. The days in question were the day my aunt, dad's younger sister died, the day after, the day of her funeral and the day her ashes were scattered. In those emails were my mom asking to meet up with Chris, and asking Chris what he was going to do with her when she got to his place. Any hope, and I mean any, hope, your mother had of even coming close to reconciling, was dealt a death blow from this one thing. Lots of couples do manage to survive the infidelity, if crap like this doesn't happen. But that level of cheating is not something that anyone could ever come back from. My guess is that as soon as he read those emails and saw the date, that any love or feelings he had for your mother disappeared in that instance. And so it should, as that is just patently disgusting and disrespectful. Cheating is bad enough, but that amount of disrespect is on a completely different level. Look after your dad OP, but I suspect that his anger at your mother will take years to subside, if ever. I hope for her sake that she doesn't fight this and just agrees to the divorce. If she pushes back in any way, your father will burn everything to a cinder before he gives her anything. It's been a few weeks since everything has happened. I don't know if he's still angry though he doesn't really talk about it with any of us. He has been spending a lot more time at the gym now compared to his normal schedule, and he's been spending time with his friend who trains boxers and other fighters. I don't know if that is indicative of anything concerning, or he's just trying to get rid of his anger in a healthy controlled environment. It's the last part mostly. Gym brings focus. The boxing ring brings focus. It allows us to not think, just do for an hour or two. Our emotions are wired more physically into us if that makes sense. This is mostly how we deal with highly intense emotional situations. That anger will probably never fully go away, or at least not for a long while. The gym and the boxing ring are healthy outlets to help bleed that anger so it doesn't consume your father. And OP, I've read through your original post in the update. If you don't want to face your mom it's okay. She didn't only betray your dad, she betrayed you and your brother and sister too. Your update, especially with the dates your dad had opened on the laptop, proves that your mom was selfish and only out for her pleasure. If you do go through meeting her, prepare for her to try and spin doctor slash gaslight the situation to her advantage. Also assume you'll probably not get closure on why she cheated in any way that will satisfy you. Be safe. Trust in your siblings and your dad. That's true family. Hope the four of you can heal fully from this. After my dad told my mom that he loves someone else and gonna leave her, she started running in the forest. Years later, she explained to me, that she started running, because otherwise she would have started drinking or did even worse. She needed a way to feel something else or nothing. Also, nobody heard her screaming and crying in the forest. She could let out her feelings without putting weight on her kids' shoulders. Now nah, this is great. People tend to let themselves go when they're in serious relationships. Your dad is probably trying to let off some steam and make himself a better prospect too for when or if he eventually goes back on the market. Honestly, your dad seems like a great man and I'm happy you and your siblings are supporting him. That's all you can really do. Try to make his life as stress-free and easy as possible, spend quality time with him, laugh and so on. I can't imagine what he's going through right now, it's nothing like the cheating I've experienced from girlfriends. But he does have you guys, so he'll be okay. You and your siblings are going to be the deciding factor on how hard this hits him. My dad hasn't really let himself go. He was very on top of being physically fit to the point of forcing me and my siblings to go on runs with him during the weekends and in the summer. He did stop boxing when my brother was born though, so he could be at the house more. I can remember when he bought home gym stuff when I was six and I nearly crushed myself trying to copy what he was doing. Now for the last story. My husband doesn't understand why I'm upset that he slept over a female coworker's house after a fight. My husband and I 39 male and 41 female just came back from our 11th anniversary vacation. We had an absolutely amazing time. The day after we came home, he went fishing with his brother. When he came home, he was in a horrible mood, snapping about everything I did. He was being completely fine to the kids though, but with me, it was like I couldn't do anything right. We eventually had a huge fight. He ended up yelling and slamming a door, and I told him to leave and cool off. I really can't even pinpoint exactly what he was mad about. He ended up leaving for the night. He came home and apologized for the fight and how he acted. 
I apologized for my part in the argument. I then asked where he had stayed last night, as he can't stay at his brother's house due to his brother's wife's three cats. He told me a co-worker's house. I asked what co-worker, and he said Julia. At first, I legitimately thought he was joking. Julia is 23 and single. She lives in an apartment complex not far from us. I asked him if he was serious, and he said yeah. He ran into her after he left the house when he went to the store to get a soda. He told her what happened, and she invited him to crash on her couch. He doesn't understand why I'm upset. By his logic, he was somewhere close to home. He didn't spend money on a hotel, and he didn't have to spend a lot of gas money to drive to his mother's house. He said he slept on her couch, and if she was a single male friend, there wouldn't be an issue. I asked him if he thought it would be okay if I slept over one of my single male co-workers' houses. He said no, and that it's different, because single men aren't trustworthy. I'm just baffled by his logic and how he doesn't understand why I'm upset. Now for the advice. Talk to Julia. This may be the way, but she might lie, so tread lightly on all of it. Genuinely speaking, none of this behavior is okay to begin with. Everybody has bad days and everybody loses their cool sometimes, but all of this leading up to that, not cool. Also, time is of the essence. Don't wait to talk to her. The longer you wait, the more time you give him to cover his tracks. And if she's whack, then she will go along with it. Talk to her. And remember that if anything stupid did happen, she's not necessarily at fault. And even if she was, she already doesn't care about your opinion so your emotions would be wasted on her. Also, remind your husband that single females can't be trusted either. And finally, if all else fails, remember that people are going to do what they want to do regardless of anyone else's opinion. We're selfish like that. If he wants to do something stupid, let him. Because if you don't, he's gonna figure out a way to do it behind your back and anger you. Rather explain the possible consequences of said actions that would directly affect the both of you. No sense in arguing if he wants to do something you're not okay with. He needs to understand he will be met with the same level of respect. Did he actually go on a fishing trip with the brother, or was that a cover-up? Call the sister-in-law and ask if her husband, the brother, went fishing.